once again, everybody, and welcome to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Zagacki with Don Bailey Jr., University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz. Canes are coming off a bye week and a big game coming up this week against North Carolina at 3.30. Good to see you, Coach. Welcome back from the bye week, and uh, you come back from the bye week, however, without such uh, great news as uh, you'll be down with, uh, without your quarterback now for the rest of the year in De'Ara King. Yeah, it, um, we knew right after the Michigan State game that we may lose him for the season. He, he suffered a, a pretty significant shoulder injury. Um, he had the option right away just you know, to have a surgery right then, and, and Derek wanted to explore every opportunity to try to rehab it and, and come back and see if he could play. You know, and if, if, it, if it calmed down over a few weeks, would there be some avenue for him to come back? And sought out second opinions. You know, obviously our medical personnel do a great job, and he just wanted to, you know, leave no stone uncovered. And, you know, I guess we're three or four weeks out now and finally came to the realization that, you know, surgery was probably going to be his only answer. He really had no option. So, uh, you know, it gave him some time, I think, to be at peace with it. It's, it's obviously difficult for him personally for how hard he worked, uh, how much he put in to come back. Um, this year and how important him coming back was to so many of the guys returning. Um, obviously, the, the, the golf he creates for our football team, not just in terms of what he can do on the field, but, but the impact he has in the locker room off of it. Um, but, you know, but we are where we are. Uh, Tyler Van Dyke is our quarterback. Uh, I think we're all excited about that. I think our team knows, um, based off the evidence, what we saw late in the Virginia game, that he, he's got some ability to lead us. And... Um, and so we move on. Coach, you go Derek King, but you also are without Corey Gaynor. There's two offensive captains. So you talk about the golf. The golf got wider and deeper when you don't have the leadership on the field as well. Yeah, certainly from a leadership standpoint, you know, Derek for the team, Corey by far the, the best leader of the offensive line. Corey just, Corey was just, he was a shell of his former mm -hmm. self through the first couple of games, and he just knew that. He couldn't continue that way, and, and the, the hope was that it could be a short-term fix. Um, they found out it was much worse, and and, uh, and again, just a, a such a shame for Corey and for us as a team, but but for Corey, yeah. like for Derek, you know, you just, these guys, they deserve better. I mean, to be to, quite honestly, so you know, you talk about losing your best senior, you know, leader offensive lineman, probably losing your best overall offensive lineman in Jalen Rivers. You know, not even talking about Don Chaney's. You know, you know, I mean, there's. There's been some firepower taken off this offense from where we started, so there's, there's some big voids that some other guys need to come uh, step up into. Starting with, and you mentioned uh, Tyler Van Dyke did some nice things in the second half against Virginia. He's a different kind of quarterback. He's got a big arm, probably not the same kind of runner as Derek, although he did run for the 24-yard touchdown. I almost came out of my shoes on that <laughs> one. Uh, but really, he's a guy that's a drop-back passer, and he can throw the ball I don't know if he has unlimited range, but does the offense change? Yeah, he can rip it. I, and I think that's one of the great things about Rhett Lashley's offense is, you know, if you look at his background, they've had, you know, mobile quarterbacks at Auburn, whether it was Nick Marshall, Cam Newton, those type guys. They've also had more drop back passing guys. You know, he obviously had great success at SMU with uh, Shane Bichelle. So, found, you know, that, that it's an offense that, that can be catered around the strengths of the quarterback. So, Certainly, Derek's mobility provided a lot for us, and and not just in called runs, but scrambles. Tyler can run though, you know, as we saw. I mean, Tyler does have some wheels. Now he's not going to have the shift and the put a foot in the ground stuff that Derek had, but uh, but as you mentioned, he he's got an arm. He's got a live arm, and and it, and it brings the entire field in play. And you know, we like the way that our wide receivers are developing, and and um, you know, so that element of of the of the passing game is still in play for us. Coach, the, the news got a little worse, too, though. You have Jake Garcia, who's out for an extended period of time. We have got a great look at him against Central Connecticut State. But now you have Van Dyke and Risk and Matoka, Risk being a walk-on. So you, you went from, from recruited guys to somewhat um, dealing with a walk-on as a backup. Yeah, it was, it's a, this, team, this team's been through a lot now. I mean, it was, it was all really within a week. You know, you find out about Derek and then, you know, Jake, and we've got the really – positive game against Central Connecticut to get those guys' feet on the ground. And, um, you know, then we found out the next day that we'll be out Jake here for, for an extended period of time. So, um, you know, it just kind of wobbled everybody a little bit, you know, and you just kind of had to quick refocus, you know, especially with the short week. Um, I will say the bye week, I think, has given us a better chance as a team to say, okay, take a deep breath. That was a hell of a September we just went through. Like I said, a, a lot of, you know, emotional ups and downs in that month. Um, 
let's hit the reset button. Let's look at where we're at right now. Let's regroup um, and get ready to make a run here in the second half of the season. Now, part of that regrouping might be uh, you do have some good news. Some guys are going to make their way back, right? Uh, some guys on defense uh, that were out for a game or two or more uh, have an opportunity, it looks like, to get back onto the field. Yeah, and again, not just really good players, but good leaders. You know, a guy like Amari Carter, you know, we'll get him back. You know, Keontre Smith, you know, we felt so good about, um, you know, where we were at with, with Smith, Flag, and Carter those first couple of games. And then, you know, we lost Carter, lost Smith. Um, I thought Wayman Steed and Gilbert Forreston have done well to, to in, their, in, their present, in, the, in the lack of their presence. But I, it just, this is the, the unit that we wanted to go out there with and the depth that we want to have behind it. Um, Jared Harrison Hunt and Jordan Miller will both return inside. Um, we'll be without Al Blades for spec- you know unspecified amount of time as, as he recovers from a surgery. So that does hurt our depth in the secondary and our, our, our competition out there at corner. Um, but you know, hey, that, that's that's football. It's just it just it's it's hitting us this year in September. Um, you know, hopefully we can find a way to stay healthy from here on out, um, and um, you know, and, and you know, start being the team that I think we envision we can be. Coach, you, you managed the final drive of the Virginia game, in my opinion, almost to perfection. You, you drain the clock down five minutes and 35 seconds. You get in a position to win at home with a kick. And unfortunately, Borregalis missed it. How has his psyche been? I know that you've had to work on that. And, and we will remind people that's what happens when freshmen play. Yeah, well, that's what happens when kickers kick. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, you, you saw it in the NFL this past weekend. I mean, there's was, there was all kinds of, I mean, five missed game-winning field goals in the Bengals game. So that happens. And, you know, and that's why our intention was to play for the touchdown mm-hmm. if, if that was available. But, um, but once the, the first couple of down distances went the way that they went, uh, and, and, and we don't, you know, we were playing for a kick that, that we know is in Andy's wheelhouse, you know, that this was not playing for a 47-yarder or something that, you know, where the odds are. I mean, there's, everything comes down to, to numbers and – we felt good about it, and, and we really felt good when they called their timeout with 13 left on the play clock. We had a chance to walk off and end the game. And got to keep in mind now, their quarterback leads the nation in passing. Correct. So giving them the ball back up by, you know, we couldn't get up by seven, so either up, up by one or up by, you know, five or six. Either way, they're going to have a chance there based off time. So um, when they called the timeout, we had a chance to walk it off, and, and uh, you know, our, I know our team believes in our guy. Um, that being said, I wish we could have executed, you know, first and second down a little bit better because, that, as it turned out, every yard mattered. You talk about four inches might be the difference in victory and, and defeat. Now there was a, there was a ton of other plays in that game that you know could have prevented it from coming out of that play, but certainly that's the one that we'll all remember. Along those lines, do you have to repair your team psyche? You mentioned tough September and ended with a tough loss. Does it come down to appealing to? Let's listen. Start with uh, we'll play from our heart. You're representing the University of Miami. You play, for, play from your heart. That gets you going someplace as you started October. Um, that sounds good. It was, it was probably much, uh, it was much rougher than that. And when I say rougher, I mean um, what we had to do is we had to turn the heat up and we had to go to work. Um, because the appealing, I mean, we can be on one hand, as I mentioned earlier, we can be sympathetic where this team has had to deal with a lot emotionally through the first five weeks. Um, but no one's feeling sorry for them. So... Um, we had to put them through a very, very difficult week this past week. Um, there's only, we're limited because of our injuries in terms of how much banging and hitting you can do. You know, you might used to have one of those weeks back in the day where was, you know, we'll get back to this. Um, but we could run, and we ran, <laughs> and we ran, and we ran, and we ran, and we ran to the point where we wanted to make it uncomfortable. We wanted to make it uncomfortable. We wanted to make people have to do things that they don't want to do. Um, and when you do that, you... Not only do you reassert your toughness, but you reassert your dedication to the team. This is, there, was, there was not going to be a solution by words or rationalization. There was going to be a solution of intention with our bodies that we're willing to go through all of this, uh, then we still have some fight in us. And I think that showed in the fourth quarter of the Virginia game. This team's got fight and wants to fight for the guys in the, that they're in the locker room. But we had, to, we had to rededicate ourselves to that in the bye week, and I, and I thought our guys did a good job of that. Coach, in, in the past ball game, you missed some interceptions. You missed some, an opportunity for some takeaways and cost you points as well. But Corey Flagg came up with a, with a big pick. And you, I have seen his growth every single week throughout this season. Yeah, Corey is getting better and better. His confidence is growing um, as he gets more reps, you know, and, and gets in there more and more. 
Um, like I said, Corey's got, he's got good instincts, good short area quickness, you know, his ability to make a play. That was a big time play. The quarterback checked to a slant and he just read the quarterback's eyes and made a really good play over there. But, but to your initial point, that's really one of the things that's holding us back right now defensively is, is we are not making the plays that have been there to be made. And, and without much difficulty, we could have had four or five interceptions in that game. And, and, and as you mentioned, some on scoring drives that they ended up getting touchdowns on those drives, not to mention the most you know, uh, crazy one where it goes through our hands and, and they got a guy laying down that catches it. So an interception for us goes to a touchdown for them. So those are some of the plays and the margins um, that when we talk about a game not coming down to a kick, that those are the plays. Now they've got some plays too that they could have made, but our defense has got to do a better job of, of whether it's, you know, we've got a couple of times we've got the quarterback dead to rights in the backfield. We've got to get that guy on the ground. Oh, those mm -hmm. are on third downs, and that's been a thing that's, that's shown up in their first five games. And we've had some interception opportunities. You know, four turnovers in five games is just not a Miami standard of defense. It's not the way we play around here. Um, and we're getting the opportunities. We're, just, we're not capitalizing. We, you know, we've got to make our short putts is the way I look at it. We get the ball in our hands. You know, we've got to finish. Coach, to pick up on that third down has been a bit of an issue getting off the field. Is there one, one breakdown? Is it simply not making enough plays or – our team's targeting certain things. Well, what we, we unpacked it all during the bye, our numbers, and, and most people are like this, our numbers on third down and five or more are really, really good. Our numbers on third down and five or less are really, really poor. Virginia, uh, I think, had six third down and one and twos in that game. So the odds, of course, of stopping somebody on third down and one, and especially now the way people are going on fourth down and one, um, aren't in your favor. So so much of what creates third down success for an offense or for a defense is what happens on the first two downs. We were actually really good on first and 10 in the Virginia game. We weren't great on second down and long. So they had some second down and long plays that got them to third and two, and that makes third down much easier for the offense to get. So, you know, third down has a lot to do with what the number is after the third and. Um, our third down and six plus numbers are, are, are on par with where we want to be. You know, obviously we led the nation a couple years ago, um, but we got we to leverage people into more of those type of down and distances. Coach, you mentioned Hunt was out and Miller was out against Virginia. That opened the door for Leonard Taylor. Let's talk about him and his development. Joe and I noticed from the box. I mean, what a, a difference from, from Central Connecticut to a, a far greater opponent. Virginia, his game stepped up a notch. And then also let's talk about James Williams. Yeah, um, well, up front, Leonard, um, he is getting better. The um, thing I'm proud of, he's, he's, he's doing a good job of, of being assignment sound. You know, because mm -hmm. it's not just, you know, can you make a play and can you do it? Can you can you also be solid? You know, everyone can with, with inside guys, everyone can always see the the player, too. You know, and that's important because not all those guys can make those plays. But are also you being assignment sound and solid in your gap responsibility when people don't notice those plays. And, and he's doing a good job of that. Elijah Roberts is also a flash for a young guy mm -hmm. up front. They're, they're, they're showing up as guys that can make plays during the course of a game. They're getting better and better in that regard. And then you mentioned James in the back end. You know, James done some nice jobs. He did, he did a really nice job on a blitz, uh, pressuring your quarterback. Um, you know, a couple plays that, you know, he's, you know, he's one could have, you know, maybe laid out and got interception on the first third down of the game, you know. And those are the little things in terms of the, the nuances of, of pad level and footwork and those type of things that, you know, you know, at some point in his career, James will, will, will close down that four inches of space. That's the difference between them catching for a third down, us tipping it to stop a third down, or potentially pick sixing that, right. and what a way to start a game. So um, I think that'll happen sooner than later, but those, that's, that's the fun part of developing these young guys to become the players that we know they can be. Okay, so Miami and North Carolina coming up on Saturday at 3.30 from Chapel Hill. We'll continue on the Manny Diaz Show right after this. Hey, it's the Good Greek Spiro, and we all know that the most important part of winning a championship is getting there. And when the Miami Hurricanes need to get their equipment to each game, they call Good Greek Moving and Storage. The Miami Hurricanes trust the Good Greek, and so should you. So move like a champ and go to goodgreek.com. Good Greek Moving and Storage, the official movers of the Miami Hurricanes. Good Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. I will fight. I always do until my heart is black and blue. Cause I don't wanna give it up. I'm not giving up, giving up, no, not yet. I am cancer free. Even when I'm down on my legs, there would be no need for any further treatment. Even when they say there's nothing left. So don't give up on me. 
happy to welcome you back to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe's Gacky and Don Bailey Jr. Miami and North Carolina Saturday at 3.30 from Chapel Hill and Coach North Carolina. You run into another team that's going to be angry. They're coming off a tough loss. And, of course, they've got a heck of a quarterback in Sam Howell. What are your thoughts on what you see uh, from Carolina and where they are right now? Well, it all starts with Sam Howell. Um, obviously a great thrower, um, great on the deep balls, just can do it all. Um, his feet really jump out, though. You know, I mean, he's making a lot of plays. I think he's our second leading rusher right now. Um, design runs, scrambles, you know, and his ability to extend plays, you know, you might have him back there and he can get out of it. We've had a hard time, as we mentioned in the last segment, of getting quarterbacks on the ground. Um, he is the straw that stirs the drink. I mean, he's, 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 he's very special. Obviously, they lost some of the, the players that they had around him a year ago that were very, very special guys, but Chandler's a very capable running back that transferred from Tennessee and Downs, number 11, who lines up in their yeah. slot, is as dynamic as what they had a year ago. So, um, you know, a lot of respect, of course, for what they do on offense, um, you know, and, and it's all about explosion. You know, they do a great job creating explosive plays. Um, you know, that's been our, you know, really big battle cry, really, over the last week and a half of, is, is to make ourselves harder to be explosive against defensively. Coach, let's go back to Downs for a minute. Is just an explosive guy, but the quickness that I, I've been able to watch him on tape and see is, is really, he's at another level, or is as good as anybody in the country, really, is what we should say. Yeah, and, and you'll see him in the kick return game as well. Mm -hmm. the, the word to me is acceleration. He, he's, he's a guy that's a zero to 60 guy. Uh, quickly, well, however fast he is, and he's fast, he gets to that speed very quickly. So, um, can take short ones and just same thing, just kind of hits that pedal to the to the metal, and and, and off he goes. So, um, got to do a great job of getting multiple guys around him, you know. And uh, and it's one of those where you got to be relentless because they'll just throw him a quick screen and bang, he can he can go all the way. You know, if I think if we go back to tie the Virginia game, the quarterback into this one a little bit, I thought in the Virginia game, well, first of all, you held him to about. 150 to 200 yards below his average. You I thought you tested his patience right down to the part where we talked about the play that could have been the interception. Is that something you have to do with Sam Howell? Test his patience because he likes the big play. So is it important to force him perhaps at times to throw it into the teeth of the defense? Yeah, if you can get him to do that, he's an experienced quarterback. Um, but yeah, I, I think that goes in line with what I was mentioning about, about explosive plays, right. you know what I mean? And, they just do a great job. He's got such great accuracy down the field. Um, so when you're in coverage, you got to stay on top, you know. And, and if you're in man, you got to do a great job with your technique. If you're in zone, you got to be a great job with your eyes and your discipline. So, um, and then and then you got to affect with pass rush. You know, I mean that's a big key to it as well. And that's what we see with all these quarterbacks. Um, so, you know, but it's a challenge. And, and, and as I mentioned, they're also excellent at the RPO game. So it can be a run and a pass at the same time. So they can try to pull apart your defense in that regard. So big challenge for us. They have an offensive line that it brought at the beginning of the season, I think, came back with 112 starts. Stacey Searles, who was here at Miami with Coach Rick, um, they did a great job running the football last year. How, how are they different or how are they the same as far as attacking the running game? They're very similar to what they were a year ago. And, and um, you know, obviously their game against us a year ago is, is you know, all we need to see to, to have our atten full attention. Um, as I mentioned, the backs last year were elite, elite running backs. There's a reason why both those guys are contributing in, in the National Football League right now. They still have an outstanding running back, as I mentioned, yeah. Chandler. But, but what happened a year ago is the plays, the run plays went so explosive. I think they had some insane stat that 20% of the runs last year went for 16 yards or more, or something you just don't ever hear about. And that's because when the guys got to the second level, they were so hard to bring down. I think 25 last year led the nation in broken tackles. So. Um, those guys are naturally hard to replace, right? But they certainly are, are still formidable with what they do um, and the weapons they have now. I went to their graduation, make sure they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> the running backs. Uh, the other side of the ball, uh, the Fox brothers have been there for a long time. Demel, kind of the ringleader in the middle. Uh, they do look like they get pretty good pressure off the edge. Uh, your, your thoughts on what you're going to see and what Tyler Van Dyke's going to face from their defense. Yeah, very experienced. Um, all 11 guys who started in the Orange Bowl uh, start for them now. Um, corners that are going to challenge you, you know, and play bump and run out on the outside lanes, either with, uh, you know, in a cover one or a cover four construct. You know, as you mentioned, they've got some different pressures to, to try to get after you, to try to get after your running back and protection, kind of blow him up and, and just make it uncomfortable for the quarterback. Um, 
and, and some funky stuff they can do on third down to try to get you. So um, they're, they're a big challenge. They're, they're very well constructed, very well uh, coordinated and coached. Um, and then, yeah, you've got a quarterback who's making his first start on the road, right? right? So that is what it is. So what, again, what it comes down to, we have to play well around the quarterback. The offensive line's got to do a great job, whether it's in pass protection or getting some runs to go. And then we've got to make some contested catches. They're, they're, they're not going to let guys generally run wide open because of they're, they're going to be in a more of a man posture. Um, that's been a big point of emphasis to us this year, right? Can we make more plays down the field? Can we make more contested catches? We've had guys um, who have shown that they can do that, you know, whether it's Rambo is off to a great start. You know, you know, you got guys like Harley and Restrepo over the middle of the field. You know, they got the young guys. So that's going to be a big part because our guys, everyone's got to help out uh, Tyler. On the road, especially special teams are key. Fortunately for Miami, the punting game has been fantastic this year, and we hope that Lou keeps giving us the field position advantage. Yeah, Headley has been elite. Obviously, um, that whole unit's been fantastic. They take so much pride. I mean, they know. I mean, the guys covering everybody knows how special Louis Headley is, and they want to protect for him and they want to cover for him because they know they're part of a great punt unit. The problem is that every we play against, it seems like the punters we play against all add 15 yards to their average. I don't know if Louis inspires them. <laughs> um, trying to keep if, up with him as well. Yeah, does, I, mean, I he's think they're all from Australia. <laughs> he's giving them pointers during pregame, which he shouldn't be doing, but um, um, because their punter, Virginia's punter, might have won them the game. You know, we don't feel the punt. The ball bounces to our one-yard line. We end up getting a safety out of that, and we lost by two. So That's right. Um, we see how those things – we saw in the App State game in the other direction. I mean, these plays lead to points, and uh, field position is so crucial, and kicking game on the road is always vital. You mentioned guys playing well around Van Dyke or have to play well. Cameron Harris has gone back-to-back -back weeks for 100 yards. And uh, so perhaps a little discussion on Cameron and also – what your thoughts were on Knighton getting back. It looked like he was a shoestring or so away from a couple of big runs. He was. I think the two of them, um, you know, obviously we miss Chaney and, and uh, we love the young guys we have, but the two of them, I think they work great together. Uh, I, think, I think they make each other better. I think Jalen's presence helps elevate Cam's game. Um, you know, Cam obviously got a speed to go all the way, which he did on the, on the stretch play for a long one. Um, but I also thought he made some nice plays in between the tackles, made some great runs on the last drive to get us down there. Uh, and then Jalen, as you mentioned, Jalen may have a, have a chance to, to be explosive on his own. I, there were two or three that, you know, he was brought down, you know, by clipping his ankle. So it was great to get him back in there. He's back up to game speed now, um, and we'll continue to, to get the best out of both of those guys here the rest of the way. Coach, give us an update on the young receivers. Everybody's, everybody likes to hear about how they're progressing, especially after seeing what happened against Central Connecticut. Yeah, I, I think all those guys' roles are, are continuing to, to develop. Um, you know, you, you can see what Burchard is the guy. You're going to try to find a way to get him the ball every game in multiple different ways. And, and now you can, you know, whether you use him as a decoy, because now, hey, he's in the game, get ready for this. And now, you know, everybody chases that guy that way. We actually had a wheel. Um, late in the game, you know, we kind of faked one to Brashard and we had night and wide open for a wheel that we missed there. So that's kind of how that all sets up. And, and then the other guys are, are all keep getting better, you know. But, but, but what I love is, you know, you know, for example, like a guy like Brinson had the big drop on third down. But that's okay. That's all part of development. It stinks in a crucial game where everything matters. But not everything's going to be perfect. You've got to show part of these, the freshmen is they're talented. They've got to show they can respond and be resilient and and, and I think that's what is, I'm most proud of Romello is that those guys, they don't blink from that. It doesn't affect their confidence, and they're ready to make the play the next time it, it, their number's called. Do, do you think uh, by getting Broussard Smith on the field in different, different uh, spots, along with uh, a, a Harley and a Knighton, we see them at the same time, has your speed improved uh, on offense? Yeah, I think overall it has. I think, I think um, um, speed and playmaking. You know, I think that's the whole key, you know, and, and because what you're looking for is, you know, with a guy like Burchard, for example, is who can put a foot in the ground and make people miss, right. you know, and, and those are the plays that, you know, you're going to call a play and the expectation you get this many yards, but, if, but, if, but now, you know, you mentioned, you know, we talked about North Carolina's running backs a year ago. Okay, it may be blocked for this, but now I can make that first guy miss and then add that on my own. You know, we call those cane yards. You know, what can you get past what sort of the play is on the chalkboard? And that's, you know, that's is our X versus their O. And the more of those one-on-one -on -one matchups you can win, the better offense you're going to have.
Coach, we heard you talk about it after the ball game and then earlier this week as well about complementary football where the offense helps the defense, the defense helps the offense. Give us some examples of how that can be done. Oh, the Virginia game was a, was a perfect example of that. Um, you know, defense goes punt, touchdown allowed, punt, 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 punt. So five out of six first drives against Virginia, who's an outstanding offense, were punts. Um, and we're not happy about the touchdown drive, but, but five out of six were wins. Um, and, and you're losing after that point, you know? And, and so what you're doing is you're not possessing the ball in offense, you're getting three and outs, and your defense is racking up a ton of snaps, right? So by the time the seventh drive comes up, I think we're at 40 some odd snaps on defense. I mean, 40 for a half is big. We're talking about 40 snaps and there's still four minutes left in the first half. They go down and score. That's they're disappointing, but what happens sometimes is when you add those snaps, we know, because we're trying to do that to the other team. When you add those snaps to a defense, it may not even be the physical exhaustion, but sometimes a mental exhaustion. That's, That's where the guys aren't quite as dialed in. Things that were not open earlier become open because you, you, know, you, you don't just get slower by foot, you get slower by thought. Um, so that's where an offense, that we want to go fast. We want to be a tempo offense. But if you go fast, you've got to get first downs and you've got to get points because if not, you're going to expose your defense to a ton of snaps, right? Especially against a good offense like Virginia. But then the flip side of that is that in the past game when our offense did score, it felt like every time they did, Virginia went down the field and answered. And we had a couple, we had, and, and, and to me, one of the defining moments in the game was after the flag interception, great complimentary offense, we, we go and cool. score. We get them in a third down and long immediately. Crowd comes into it, you know, and we get the quarterback, Ch Ch Chance Williams does a great job pressuring the quarterback. We have the quarterback two on one to get sacked in the backfield. And the place is going to erupt. They're going to have to punt. All the momentum is wearing orange and green right now and we don't get the quarterback on the ground. The guy scrambles for a first down. That's the drive that ends up being the ball through our, our hands that they intercept. And that to me is understanding that, you know, look, the defense wants to stop them all the time, but when an offense scores and you got a chance to really seize the momentum, you have to understand those are, not all drives are created equal. And so to me, that's where, hey, we get a three and out right here after our offense scores, get some confidence. You know, now all of a sudden, that's how you can get sort of get that pinwheel effect. And that's the part that I thought really hurt us in the Virginia game. That's what, you know, going on the road, where you got to create your own momentum against the crowd. I think that'll be really important Saturday. Okay, very best of luck against North Carolina. That's University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz, and we will continue on the show right after this. The school bus. The Zack Wagon. Wally. No matter what you call your car or why you're letting it go, AutoNation will buy it, and you don't have to buy one from us. We're paying top dollar right now. So go to AutoNation.com or come see us for a super easy appraisal. Get paid on the spot, and you can deposit it the same day. Visit any AutoNation store or AutoNation.com. What drives you drives us. If you train like a pro, then you should be treated like a pro. Much like the human body, our team of sports medicine experts moves as one to achieve a singular goal. Recover your game. University of Miami Sports Medicine Institute. Experts treat athletes of all levels, elite pros, active adults, and youth athletes. Recover your game. Visit uhealthsportsmedicine.com. It's now time for the breakdown segment with head coach Manny Diaz. And coach, what do you got for us today? Well, we talked about this week, it's uh, Tyler Van Dyke's team. And uh, I think we all saw with our own eyes um, him grow up in this Virginia game. Virginia's always a very you know, complex defense, some of the looks that they throw at you. And um, just want to kind of unpack some of the things that were really exciting that Tyler did for a guy making his first ACC start. Um, and some of the things I think we'll see more and more here in the future. This is a, a point in the game. It's, 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 it's early on, and of course, we're not, we haven't, we are, we're not off to a great start, right? You know, 9-0 down late in the second quarter. So, you know, trying to get some confidence, trying to get some things going, right? And Virginia's trying to make it hard. I mean, look where they got all their guys, right? Coming out with a three-safety look, which is a little bit exotic, a little bit different, confusing for a young mm -hmm. quarterback. Um, and sometimes it's just the most simple thing, and this is what we talk about, about changing our team this year. You know, they're going to leave a one-on-one -on -one out here. You can see there's really no safety help over the top. So that's Charleston Rambo. Great speed release off the line, and look at look at how quickly Van Dyke has this ball in the air. I mean, Tyler 
Rambo is barely 10 yards down the field and Tyler's already got his hand off the ball ready to throw it, okay? He can anticipate where, the, where Rambo is going to be. And you know what catches me on this play, Coach, is the fact that the timing is there and that's only the, really only the second game this young man's played in and to be able to come with, up with that before the receiver's even looking. That's right, and this is why we do pat and go every day, you know, when guys throw to different guys. And, um, and now watch, now this is where receivers, we talk about everyone help your quarterback out because watch what Rambo does. If Rambo tries to run wide to where the ball is going to come out, the DB can follow him. So see these little dash marks right here? Those are the college, that was the college numbers right there? Yes. So watch how Rambo holds the defensive back off to the college numbers and then fades away at the end. So watch out right now. See how Rambo is, that's nine yards from the sideline. Watch where he catches the ball, but see how he keeps all this grass available for Tyler to fade the ball to the outside? And look at the ball drop in right over your outside shoulder. That'd be hard to just to hand the ball that guy that perfectly. What could you tell a defensive back on that play? It's really good coverage. Not a whole lot that guy can do right there, you know? Better hope your lead line gets to him. That's what you'd tell him probably. That's right. So that kind of got things exciting. You know I mean, that got us our first touchdown. This is the play after the flag interception. Third down, it's a, it's a big time play. Um, Virginia's got one safety in the middle of the field. They're playing man to man here on our four wide receivers. Um, and this is, a, this is a big, big time throw. It's a, it's a, it's a blitz. We got it picked up. Tyler's got to trust that. You see his eyes are downfield, not looking at the blitz, which is great for a young quarterback. Okay, so great drop. Harley does a nice job of sticking the route. He gets a defensive back to lock out his hips to the sideline so he can beat him across his hips. And same thing, watch when the ball is in the air. See, Harley's just made his break. He, he, Tyler doesn't have to see. He, see how the hand is off the ball right now? He doesn't see Mike Harley open. But he knows and trusts that Mike's going to get open against this coverage. And, and same deal, watch the ball placement. Only one person can get that ball right there. I mean, I mean again, the coverage, I mean, the, the defensive back is right over his back as the ball comes in. There can only be one person that can catch that. Mike does a nice job toe tapping, big time play to get us back in the game. Coach, you also mentioned the fact that as far as helping your quarterback out, running back, Cam picks up, does a nice job yeah. picking up the pressure. Yeah, watch. You see the protection. You see three guys working together, Ja'Kai Scaife and, and Williams. Yep. Cam, as you mentioned, you know, 100 yards, but these are the plays that really matter. And again, Tyler, just a really clean pocket, big time protection. And, and again, look at that, that ball placement. Look, I mean, watch Mike extends his hands and as if it was just placed right in. That's really, really well done. You know, but we got to come back now. We're, da we're down. We got to make some tough plays. So again, same thing. And this is what I think Tyler can just show his, his, his arm strength. Similar route that he hit Harley on, right? We can hit him on a corner route, right? And same thing, sees the defensive back, has got his hips locked out, and just rips it, you know, from the 18-yard line, rips it across the field, you know, on a, on a rope, you know, big-time throw right there, you know, to be able to move the chains on a second down. So big-time big throw shows he's got the whole width of the field, you know, in, in, in his arsenal. And then some big plays coming down the stretch just to show these last three. Um, this one really got us going as well. And, and what I like about this is it's going through a progression, okay? He had actually hit this corner route to Rambo earlier in the game, right? You can see Virginia's got two deep safeties, but the corner kind of, you know, sort of sloughs off of it, right? Kind of protect that because their coach said, hey, don't let him do that anymore. So, he, he, you know, he looks, he goes, you know, one to two, but now he's got to come back across the field, you know? So he looks to come back across the field, and all of a sudden Restrepo is breaking open. He buys a little bit of time in the pocket, settles, sees it, trusts it, and lets it rip, big time explosive play, gets us back in the game. So it's not just, hey, how did Restrepo get so open? It's because he did a great job with his eyes. See how the safety attaches to the corner route with his eyes? Well, that opens up, remember that safety's got half the field. Well, look where Restrepo ends up. He ends up in that, in that guy's half the field. And coach, give us a little insight that the quarterback feels that. It's not necessarily seen. That's just a lot of that's through rep and understanding of where he's supposed to take the ball. That's right, and that's why it's a progression. He just goes through his progression and he, what he knows the way that the play is designed, if it's open, not open there to there to there, you know that eventually you, you come back across the field, and someone will be there, and you'll you'll see it you'll see it show up here. Um, well, this is a you know crazy legs Van Dyke. You know, I don't know if anybody <laughs> thought he had it in him, but he did. Um, you know, uh, a, a crucial third down and ten. It's the same thing. It starts through his progression. It's not there. They get a rusher that kind of flushes him out of the pocket, and away we go. And as we said, we watched. Hey, listen, we do sprints. And Tyler Van Dyke's going to try to win every sprint against the combos. And I'm telling you, there's some fast – that's against our running backs. Um, there's some fast dudes. And Tyler, 
he's gonna try to he's gonna try to go and and it, the, that by now the train is unhinged it's off the tracks and it ends up all the way in the end zone what a what a great and 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 how great for our team you see the response of our players on our team oh, yeah. seeing a young guy like that you know you know we, you know you, you see the guy do these things in practice to see him do it in the game it just gets everybody juiced up gets everybody fired up same thing they, they get a guy to get him off the spot but he's got the ability to make plays in space and coach there was no second thought he was taking that he peeled he pulled it and ducked it i'm glad there's a wall back there because he had something to stop <laughs> stop himself on because that train that train was 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 a, was a run and and then the last play and this is such a big one third down and 13 on the drive that would end up being the field goal attempt you know so i mean a a, a game-winning type play right here and same thing and i just want to talk about a young quarterback trusting a progression so same deal this play starts here you know no not ideal right could could come back here you mm -hmm. know but third and 13 that's probably not a winner right so he's, he's gone on to mallory you know and sometimes why i say hey, God, you know mallory's not making the catches well guys they know they got will mallory too right they see him so they got two linebackers with a safety on top you know sort of got a triangle there on top of mallory so now you got to come back so watch tyler see his see his eyes he's looking at mallory he knows he's got to go to the next window right now so you can see right there he's made his decision and he knows he's got rambo working into this open window right there puts it on him and rambo makes what we talked about earlier a contested catch right at the sticks for a big time first down we'd rip the, a couple runs get down there i mean these are the plays that you know you can practice this uh but to be a young quarterback on a, on a on a on a potential game winning drive when everything matters in a third down situation that's that's big time right there that'll do nothing but give him confidence and our team confidence in him well thank you coach that does it for the breakdown segment with head coach manny diaz with you health virtual clinics you can see our experts in every specialty wherever you are University of Miami health system providers are available here for all your health care needs. All you need is a phone or tablet to schedule a virtual visit with us. See a U-Health provider virtually today or at a time that's convenient for you. Visit umiamihealth.org slash virtual clinics or call 305-243-4000. Hey, it's the Good Greek Spiro, and we all know that the most important part of winning a championship is getting there. And when the Miami Hurricanes need to get their equipment to each game, they call Good Greek Moving and Storage. The Miami Hurricanes trust the Good Greek, and so should you. So move like a champ and go to goodgreek.com. Good Greek Moving and Storage, the official movers of the Miami Hurricanes. Good Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. The joint chiropractic adjustment of the game. Second half, Miami and Virginia. Cameron Harris on the cutback and slices right through the defense. Harris will take it all the way for a Miami touchdown. Cameron Harris' his fifth touchdown of the year. This angle coming right at you. Harris goes all the way in a straight line to the end zone for the joint chiropractic adjustment of the game. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr. And joining the party now, our mm -hmm. sideline reporter and University of Miami podcaster, Josh Darrow. Hurricanes on the road this weekend, fellas against North Carolina. That means it's the first road start for Tyler Van Dyke. They're always interesting. Uh, the quarterback getting his first start on the road, you've got to now deal with the crowd. You've got to deal with a different environment, a different locker room. The good news is, is Van Dyke has been there and somewhat done that. I think another part of it that'll help him this week is the fact that Virginia played an odd front. You're going to see some of that against North Carolina. I think that there'll be some recall. And more importantly, I think that he ended the game against Virginia on a very high note. They drove the length of the football field in five minutes and 35 seconds, chewed the clock, and put the team in a position to win. The kicker missed the kick, but the offense got to the point where they had a chance to win the football game, and that should have built up their confidence. Yeah, and I think, I, mean, I do think we need to understand, right, again, that we are dealing with a redshirt freshman, or a second year freshman, right? We had the new vernacular after the, the COVID year. Uh, and this is just another step in the process, right? Obviously, you want to see growth game the game, but the environment will be different. He's going to be on the road. North Carolina's desperate. They're down, were they two three losses or three losses already mm -hmm. in the league, right? So 
we'll see what kind of desperation they have, what kind of ferocity they come up with. They're going to know again what they're dealing with in terms of a guy that doesn't have as many snaps under his belt uh, than De'Ara King. But Don's right. I mean, you look back at the Virginia game, and that's an easily a game when we were down two touched or 12 points that could have gone the exact opposite way, which means just fold and go, and he just kind of crumbles under the weight of that. And yet there they were with a chance to, you know, to win it at the end. But I think we have to. I think we have to proceed with caution. You know, if we're going to watch this game, we have to proceed with caution and. You have to go grow through these games, you know. There's sort of a rite of passage when it comes to that position being on the road. He checks a few boxes for me. Mm-hmm. I like my quarterbacks big. He's big. He's big enough. He's big. And he, I like my quarterbacks with an arm. And he can throw the football. Oh, yeah. not, there aren't too many spots on the field that he can't reach. Now, his life would be a lot easier. And he's accurate. He can be accurate. His life would be a lot easier with a, with a running game. But... Uh, which he did get the other night against Virginia. Uh, Cameron Harris gave him 100 yards, but this guy can lay the ball out there. He can, Joe. And, and, you know, you bring up the running game, and I think it's important to realize that what we saw out of Ta- uh, Tyler Van Dyke in his run game, the, the score that he had, you go back through football, and I, I always go back to uh, Ohio State when they won that championship, or they stole that championship from Miami. <laughs> I, I, I got The quarterback that they had, he gave Crazy. them – they, he gave them 50 to 60 yards a game. Now, is Van Dyke a 50 to 60 yard a game guy? I don't think so. But if he can give you two or three touchdowns, that's going to make it a lot easier on everybody because then you have a defense that has to worry about him being somewhat of a threat. Well, I think the thing with Van Dyke, and we saw this, even going back to his freshman year, the ball comes out of his hand easy. You know what I mean? Like there is no effort at when he, to, for him to get the ball out of his hand and down the field. And again, the throw to Rambo on the sideline, he showed great touch. We just saw the play with, with Harley. And even if he, you know, it'd be probably a little much to expect that kind of touchdown run again out of him, but just even if he's just the threat of the run, a couple of carries that just keep the defense on the heels, do you pull, do you keep, do you throw? You know, you got ha- to gotta have that. And plus, you said you like you guys can throw. They're accurate. He's big and he's tough. You know, he can he'd take a hit. I went on, well, not too many hits. <laughs> Because we're getting a little, we're getting a little thin. But again, he's a, he's a look. He's a smart kid. He's a sharp kid. He works hard. It's 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 a it's just it's going to come. But we just it's going to have to come at his own pace. I mentioned uh, he'll get help with a running game. It's going to be tough to run against North Carolina. They do a pretty good job uh, of stopping the run. Cameron Harris back to back, 100 yard games. If I like my quarterbacks big, I like my running backs fast, and that's night. He's fast. Well, Knighton is fast, and you, you have a combination there. And now you're going to see what happens with one of the freshmen. Do they come in and they throw a third guy into the equation? But I think it's important for Miami to have some consistency in the running game that they can lean on. Because more importantly, that obviously takes most of the pressure off the quarterback. But you want also to have the down and distance that's favorable for the quarterback to have more options. Yeah, I think the thing with Miami, Manny talked about it this week, is staying on the field, just chewing up some of the clock, even creating some balance between time of possession with his offense and his defense. But if you can dictate the terms of the game with your running game as a play caller for Brett Lashley, that makes it easier, and then in in turn makes it easier for his quarterback, Van Dyke. It should also create more space on the field for the wide receivers to make plays at the second level. You know, when you are playing with your backup quarterback, and, and let's face it, we kind of don't know if Van Dyke was going to be the second string quarterback or the third string quarterback. That's a very good point. Garcia He's either two or was three. in that mix also. Right. So we're not quite sure if we got number two or number three. Be that as it may, uh, Coach Diaz has talked about complementary football, and, and Miami didn't have great complementary football against Virginia. Uh, create a little more havoc on defense would help and uh, and uh, when you're playing with the backup quarterback you got to get a lift from someplace else in this case your defense has to create more negative plays give you a shorter field create more turnovers you know sam howell this year is running the football way more than i ever (laughs) thought he would run in an entire career he's done a a career worth of running in six games and i believe that when that quarterback puts himself out there, especially across the line of scrimmage, you've got to take advantage of that as a defense. And I don't want to put anybody in the hospital, but I don't mind them having to come to the bench. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I think you've got to make sure that that happens this, this week. If, when he crosses that line, he's fair game. You've you got to make sure there's no targeting. You can't take cheap shots. 
but you can punish that quarterback. And he has taken enough shots that they're starting to add up too. So if, if Miami can get ahead, Miami gets in a struggle, Miami gets in the fourth down, and they keep pounding him, I think it, it leads to interceptions, it leads to fumbles, and it leads to opportunities. Well, I agree with, with what Joe said. I'm, I'm, I subscribe to making the game easy. Big plays makes the game easy on your offense. Turnovers makes the game easy on your defense and your offense. You can create either points, if you can get points off the turnover, or you just set yourself up on short field and special teams, whether it's in the return game, making kicks. We've seen it, we saw it with Iowa last weekend in terms of how they use their punter as a weapon, just pinning people back. In fact, if you go back to the first half of the Virginia game, I think we, the best field position we had was at the 16 mm -hmm. yard line through our first four. So that made it challenging, that made the game difficult for us. So, and we know the momentum that the turnover chain you know, it ignites that energy on the sideline, but there's a reason for that. Those are big momentum changing plays that could also help start to steer this thing in the right direction. It is a big game, Miami and North Carolina. We'll talk more about the Canes and the Tar Heels as we continue on the show right after this. I will fight, I always do, until my heart is black and blue. The school bus. The Zack Wagon. Wally. No matter what you call your car or why you're letting it go, AutoNation will buy it and you don't have to buy one from us. We're paying top dollar right now. So go to AutoNation.com or come see us for a super easy appraisal. Get paid on the spot and you can deposit it the same day. Visit any AutoNation store or AutoNation.com. What drives you drives us. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., and Josh Darrow. Miami and North Carolina on Saturday at 3.30. Big game for both teams. Carolina came in with huge expectations, kind of similar to what Miami faces every year. You know, sometimes expectations are an albatross. That's what Carolina's finding out. Well, they are, and I think Mac Brown even came out and blamed the media for giving, <laughs> the, the, for branding this team as the one that's going to sneak right. into the playoffs, not the ACC championship game, but into the playoffs. Coach Brown, you've been around a long time. I mean, you, you, you understand it more than anybody. He played the game. He was, in, he was one of us. He's one of us, right. He was one of so, us. So when you, you look at this, Joe, and the expectations, I think they should have had him. In a lot of respects, you got the supposedly one of the top four or five quarterbacks in the country. His his name has been mentioned the last two years, Sam Howell, for a Heisman candidate. Now, I don't know that people took into account that they lost four thousand yards of offense with the with the two running backs that were drafted three and five in the NFL and two outside receivers. But they've got, had a defense that returned. I believe it was uh, twenty one out of twenty two players from the Orange Bowl game that they lost to Texas A&M, returned to the team. So the expectations are there, and people expected them to win a lot of football games. And that's really why Matt Brown was brought back to college football. He won a national championship at Texas. He had multiple 10-win seasons at North Carolina. He's there to win, period. And that is the expectation. Well, I'm going to steal a line from my boy Joe Z over here. Check just the facts. Remember, they, they weren't 8-4 last year. You know, they had all this preseason hype coming in. They were stamped to win the Coastal. They lost four games a year ago. Notre Dame, they lost in the bowl game to A&M, Florida, Florida State. State. They lost to Virginia. Virginia. And then, to Don's point, and we talked about this earlier in the year, they lost those four guys, and we saw a team at the beginning of the year in Alabama who knows how to reload. Mm -hmm. They're just stockpiled one after the other. Yet, yeah, Mac Brown is recruiting better, but were they at the point where they were recruiting to that level where those guys can go and you can just reload. And I think we're seeing part of that is the problem. They don't have as many weapons to go to. Don mentioned it earlier. I think so that's one of the reasons why Sam Howell is running so much. One, he's, getting, he's under pressure all the time. The line can't protect him. They don't have a second back or they don't have a second or third receiver to go to. So they're figuring out what it really takes to have that kind of, to have that kind of program. But I think it's hard to write off what, what is missing uh, from last. Those guys were really, really good. This is the third time that Miami's going to face Sam Howell. 
Yes. And he's good. I mean, we, we've talked about how good he is. He lands a great deep ball. He has hurt Miami with big plays at the biggest times. Early in the game, two years ago up in Carolina, down the left sideline. Last year at Hard Rock, down the left sideline. Two years ago, Miami had him beat. It yep. was, what, fourth down and forever? And he completed a big pass. This is the game, and going into the Florida State game a week ago, they'd given up 22 sacks. Miami's got to find a way to affect Sam Howell in this game. It's the third time against him. He's made all the plays against Miami. It, it, it's a two-headed monster. You've got to affect Sam Howell, and you've got to affect Downs, the receiver. Those are the two guys that you've got to control. Sam Howell, to me, is an old school guy. I mean, he's going to run that football. He's going to take the shots. He's, he knows what kind of arm he has. He is not afraid to use it. The thing that, they, his, that he had last year is he had every piece in place to make him look like he was going to win the Heisman Trophy this year. They're still missing a few pieces. And the running game, I think, is the biggest component that they're missing because it's forced, it's, it's forced defenses now to, uh, to ha have him run the football. He's got to be the guy to run the football and create plays with his arm and his legs, Josh. Yeah, and you just saw Downs. you got to get him down in open space. And they're going to try and get him the ball in space. And he's fast. I mean, he's electric, but Miami's back end has to tackle really well in this game and get him down. And, and to what Don said earlier, if Sam, Sam Howell is carrying the ball 10, 12, 14, right. 16 times a game. If he gets across the line of scrimmage, he's fair game. You know, make him understand that maybe I don't want to quite do this again. And can they, you know, can they get the ball? Can they get the ball on the ground? Can they get, can they create turnovers? Can they shift the game in Miami's favor and make it easier for Miami's offense? Well, the, the last note on, on Sam Howell in Miami would be this. Last year, one of the biggest plays, Miami dropped an interception. Might have changed the whole game round. Dropped an interception early in the game. After that play, it was an avalanche the other way. Now, the Carolina defense in the last two years, Miami has moved the ball pretty well in the Carolina defense. Got in a big hole last season. But uh, Carolina's tough to run against. However, they've given up their share of big plays. Well, the good news is for Miami is Surratt's not there. He was the, the middle linebacker that was probably the glue for that defense. But overall, they are difficult. They're well coached. They're strong. They're good at the point of attack. They're not, they don't take a lot of risk. No, they, but they, they badger you in the secondary. Yeah. They're always holding and grabbing and pushing. That always bothers him, but that's always. okay. You got to play through it. You got to play. You got to play through it. And but you know what you're going to get. And I don't think now. This is all what we saw last year with King, and this is all what we saw the year before. If I'm the defensive coordinator, I've got a freshman coming in making his first start on the road. I'm soliciting the crowd. I'm telling my defensive front to hit him. And if you're going to get flagged, get flagged. We're going to rattle this kid because they got nobody on the bench and. I would change as much up as I could change. I think that's really what I would expect. Yeah, and I think we saw Virginia do that a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. They, you know, they we'd see, see, seen them play a little more off. You know, they were like a three-three-five, and they really were really playing off coverage in the back and didn't send a lot of pressure. They sent more against Tyler Van Dyke. I would expect that North Carolina would do the same thing. Now, they lost the rap, but the other linebacker's pretty good, forty-four. He like he likes to move and strike and hit and and play downhill. And I think they've gotten some better players. Uh, in their defensive line, and we know their secondary uh, is very good. They're extremely athletic. They've got the, the kid that uh, Grimes that came out of high school a year early. He's been there now three years. So <clears throat> they, they have the players on the back end. I mean, I think for, for North Carolina this year, they've had trouble with running quarterbacks, so that's probably not as big an issue for them in, in this game. But really, I think if you look at their team, you would probably look at the offense a little bit more and go, that's been more the problem spot than the defense because really last year with North Carolina they were scoring 40, 45 a game and in their losses this year they just haven't had that kind of output. And Josh to your point Florida State their quarterback ran all over him he had 114 yards and I Georgia, think he had two rushing touchdowns and Georgia he, Tech was the same, same way Sims Sims. did the that's same right. thing that's really been problematic so is Van Dyke who are we can expect him to run for 100 plus yards no but can we get a couple <laughs> runs out of him right again that shifts their focus and again, hopefully, should make things easier for him and opens the game up. Okay, we'll talk about the keys to the game when we continue on the show right after this. If you train like a pro, then you should be treated like a pro. 
Much like the human body, our team of sports medicine experts moves as one to achieve a singular goal. Recover your game. The school bus. The Zack Wagon. Wally. No matter what you call your car or why you're letting it go, AutoNation will buy it, and you don't have to buy one from us. We're paying top dollar right now. So go to AutoNation.com or come see us for a super easy appraisal. Get paid on the spot, and you can deposit it the same day. Visit any AutoNation store or AutoNation.com. What drives you drives us. The keys to the game are brought to you by AutoNation. AutoNation drives pink to help drive out cancer. Over $28 million donated so far to cancer treatment and research. Do your part and drive pink in a new car or truck. For the AutoNation store near you, visit AutoNation.com. Back on the Manny Diaz Show, Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., and Josh Darrow. Time for the keys of the game, Miami and North Carolina in Chapel Hill in our first key to the game. Kane's got to run the ball. Got to create some havoc on defense, and our third key is limit the impact of quarterback Sam Howell. All right, we talked a little bit in the last segment about running the ball. Cameron Harris, back-to-back 100-yard -back game. Sometimes you got to stay with it, and you break one, break one or two, it makes a big deal. Let's get three in a row. Last year, you started the season, 134, 134, no more 100-yard games. Let's get 300-yard games in a row for Harris. I, he's a senior. It's time. He's been against North Carolina multiple times in his career. Fortunately for Miami, they got the rooster back. He's a guy that can, can break some plays. And I'm with you. I think he said earlier in the show, he looked like he was a half a step away when he was running the football. Let's hope we can get some production out think, of that running game. I think some of the best football we've seen from Cam Harris, by the way. There was uh, the Michigan State game he ran hard. I think yeah. we're seeing a, uh, a tougher Cam Harris. A tougher Cam Harris, who, who he's not afraid to take on contact, right? No. And, he, and, he, and he has some physicality to break tackles. But I'm, I'm with Joe Z on the rooster. I want to see him cut loose, you know, get to that second level. Because he's kind of like what Josh Downs is for North Carolina from a different position. If he can get to that second level and break something, he easily can take it to the house. The thing about him, Joe, with when you talk about the rooster is the fact that he's going to give you that extra gear that you haven't had. But I also think we should throw into the running game the swing pass. You know, anything behind the line of scrimmage, it's not a, it's not a run, but it'll help. It'll help. Our defense uh, got to create some havoc. A lot of teams have done that against Carolina. Uh, they've given up 23 sacks this year. You've got to be able to uh, create some havoc on defense, make it tough on North Carolina. I think tackles for loss is something that Miami's done a good job of this year, that you'd like to see a lot of those. I think you can create havoc by getting uh, Sam Howell in a position where he doesn't want to cross the line of scrimmage, where he, you're hitting him and striking him so much that he's going to think twice about it. I haven't seen anybody do that yet, <laughs> but I'd like to see that happen. And then, and then the other part of the defense is the takeaway. We've, it's been absent this year. You, you'd like to be plus one every single football game. That would put Miami at plus five or six at this point of the year. You would have a whole different outlook. What's one more possession? It's a shift in field position. Yeah. It, it's hidden yardage, so to speak. We always think of it in terms of special teams, but you can shift field position with the turnover. And again, if, if Sam Howell is going to have the ball in his hand that many times, both whether it's standing in the pocket or taking off, you got to knock one loose. And if he gives you one, you got to take it. You have to take it in this game. You're going on the road, desperate. You need a win. You want to come home with a victory. I think that's probably one of the biggest keys to getting a victory and coming out of there, there with one is really the, the havoc rate and the turnover uh, really benefiting the Canes. Well, I think what went under the radar in the Virginia game is that the quarterback came in throwing for 425 yards a game. Miami held him under yep. 300, under 250, I think it was. Yeah. And so I think part of the plan was, well, let's, let's, take, uh, let's test this guy's patience. The same, I think, would have to be true with Sam Howe. You can't give up the big play. Make him drag you down the length of the field. The thing when you look at his numbers, his touchdown interception ratio was better his first and second year. This year, he's not quite there. Obvious reasons, of course, are the factors that he doesn't have the explosive players and the seniors surrounding him at the skill spots. 
But w if you're going to put this game on Sam on Sam Howell's back, he'll take it. Oh yeah, he'll take it. He's not going to back down from anybody or any competition. But you've got to make sure that he has to earn it. You just don't want to give it to him. And I think the other part of it is is that I'm not so sure that they can run the football with the confidence that they've had. That's why they're putting on his shoulders. My thought is shut down Downs, and I think you've got, you're going to make him have to look for somewhere else to throw the football. That's equally as important as dealing with Howell. I agree. I, I think this game, so it's a turnover. I also think if you're looking at Miami's defense, the front four, because they've got to put pressure on Sam Howell. That offensive line has allowed the opposing defensive line Lineman to get to Howe when he's been scrambling and moving and running, sometimes throwing in the pocket, someone's taking off down the field. So Silvera, Ford, McLeod, Johnson, Harvey, Chance Williams, those guys, I think really they, they need to be felt on Saturday. They, they is, that's where the game starts for me, is how effective can they be up front against North Carolina's offensive line? Because they, even you put on the FSU film, they're getting after Sam Howell. Well, Georgia Tech had eight sacks. So to me, that's kind of where North Carolina is off kilter. Well, it was a tough September. I've seen bad times turn good in life in a hurry. So let's hope October brings good times to the University of Miami. Canes in North Carolina on Saturday at 3.30. For head coach Manny Diaz, Josh Darrow, and Don Bailey Jr., I'm Joe Zagacki. We'll see you next week on the Manny Diaz Show. <laughs>